Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever and whenever you may be, we're so pleased to be with all of you on day one of the first virtual JCK conference. My name is Mark Bunce, Chief Marketing Officer at GIA. Thank you so much for joining us for this special edition GIA Knowledge Session, Tools for the Trade. Over the last few months, our way of connecting has dramatically changed. We have all discovered new tools, developed new routines, and mastered the art of the Zoom call, WebEx, Teams, and of course, go to webinar that connects us here today. And we've all learned to communicate virtually through really small people boxes in the corners of our screens. So we thought we'd do things a bit differently. No small people boxes, no small PowerPoints. Today, we are full screen. And for the next 30 minutes, you will hear from our GIA team about the many tools we have and are developing for you. New content, enhanced education, more retail support, new products and services, innovation, and digital transformation. That is what today is all about. Now more than ever, we are here to serve you, our GIA community, in new and exciting ways. And we hope you'll engage with us as our speakers will be at the ready to answer any questions you may have live in the chat feature. And if you want to connect with us beyond today, we encourage you to join us at gia.edu forward slash JCK virtual. We look forward to hearing from you. Okay, let's get started. To begin, it is my privilege to introduce an incredible leader who has been a driving force, loyal ambassador, and trusted friend to our industry for over four decades, our CEO, Susan Jock. Thank you, Mark. And hello, everyone. I hope this finds each of you and your family safe and healthy. While nothing can replace the value of being with our industry colleagues, customers and friends in person, we very much appreciate and applaud JCK's efforts to bring us all together to keep the rhythm of our industry going in these very uncertain times. As we gather today, there are positive signs that our industry is beginning to move forward. Miners are mining Mother Nature's treasures. Manufacturers are cutting and polishing rough into exquisite gems. Designers are creating beautiful pieces, and retailers are bravely and creatively maintaining the all-important link to their customers, who now more than ever are the pull that the entire supply chain counts on. There are also clear signs that our industry is at a critical inflection point. Even before this unforeseen and unprecedented pandemic, the world was moving at a disruptive and accelerated pace. Now it is changing even faster and in ways that we cannot yet fully comprehend. What is certain is that a new normal has arrived. And as the gem and jewelry industry emerges from this global shutdown, we must widen our perspective on what really matters to our customers and listen to their needs. At GIA, we are optimistic by nature and experience. While shifting consumer demands and behaviors may further challenge the way we do business, we believe the human desire to celebrate life's moments with gifts of gems and jewelry, which predates the pandemic by millennia, will outlast COVID-19 well into the future. In these times of extraordinary challenge, we see a great opportunity to adapt, to transform, and to lead. We are hard at work to carry out our mission and serve this industry that we feel so privileged to be a part of. Our labs around the world are open. Our schools are redefining remote learning and supporting students whose on-campus studies were interrupted or delayed and welcoming new students eager to learn. Our global team is conducting and sharing the research that lets us identify gems, treatments, laboratory drone and stones and we are excitedly pursuing innovation at a disruptive pace. Innovation that will transform diamond grading with technology fueled by GI's expertise, unparalleled data, and gemological research capabilities that will enable us to deliver advancements in consistency, accuracy, and speed like never before and unlike any other. This is the power of our mission. In this time of such uncertainty, it gives us hope, purpose, and sets a new path for progress. It drives us to make our work more meaningful than ever before. We hope that you enjoy today and that you're as excited as we are about what is coming next for us all. I'll be back at the end of this webinar with some exciting news that we are sharing for the very first time. 
Thank you. Hi, I'm Nellie Barnett with GIA. Let's begin with our mission, the same mission that has driven us for the past 90 years, to protect the public trust in gems and jewelry. Part of fulfilling our mission to serve the public means educating it. We've taught hundreds of thousands of students and are proud to have around 150,000 active alumni. Hopefully, many of you tuning in are among that group. GIA was founded to share knowledge about Earth's treasures with jewelers, wholesalers, appraisers, hobbyists, designers, and more. We are so committed to our mission that we recently gave away over six million in free essentials e-learning courses, helping to educate 10,000 students during this challenging time. This means thousands of potential AJPs will enter the jewelry market more knowledgeable about diamonds, colored stones, and jewelry. And in 2017, we partnered with the NGO PACT to distribute gem knowledge to women artisanal miners in Tanzania. GIA staff delivered presentations in several villages and gave out free copies of the GIA Guide for Artisanal Miners, along with translucent trays for sorting gems. For many artisanal miners, this education was life-changing, helping them to better process their gems and bargain with brokers profitably. Seeing the success of this initiative, GIA pledged an additional 1.3 million to expand the program to Madagascar, Nigeria, Rwanda, and Zambia. Now, even though unforeseen challenges keep some of our schools closed and many of us apart, GIA remains as committed to education as ever. With nine locations in major cities around the world, we were always accessible. And now, as we ramp up e-learning, truly no one is out of reach. E-learning allows students to learn at their pace, any place, as long as there's Wi-Fi. In our gem identification e-learning course, you'll practice identifying more than 60 species of gemstones, distinguishing natural from laboratory-grown gems, and detecting gem treatments. And we ship you stones so you can practice and perfect testing procedures and techniques. Plus, you'll learn how and when to use gemological laboratory services and how to use gem identification skills to protect your business. Our diamonds and diamond grading courses brings to life the skills needed to grade diamonds. Take it from me, I have a graduate diamonds diploma and graded diamonds in our laboratories for years. In this course, you'll learn the influence of color, clarity, cut, and carat weight on diamond value, all about diamond treatments, simulants, and laboratory-grown diamonds, and you'll learn about segments of the diamond industry beyond retail, including dealing, cutting, and manufacturing. Our courses are fueled by our world-class research, field gemology expeditions, and the diverse expertise of our staff around the world. E-learning is no different. Our e-learning curriculum is filled with media-rich materials and concise text that brings gems to life. Distance education instructors are always on hand by phone or email to provide students with answers, support, and guidance. As our world grows and changes, the way we educate students continues to evolve. But our commitment to education remains the same. Go to gia.edu slash jckvirtual to learn more about our online education. Beyond the classroom, GIA knowledge and content offerings can be discovered in our field expeditions, in the ruby mines of Mozambique, in our grading labs around the globe, from deep inside our world famous gemological library, and a really cool passionate Facebook community. When on campus classes temporarily paused back in March, we wanted to make sure that gem knowledge rocked on. And that led us to knowledge sessions. First of its kind for the Institute, these live webinars are designed for you to engage and inform and hopefully entertain on the most pressing issues in gemology today, including gemstone origin, laboratory-grown stones, and new grounds in field gemology, 
Knowledge sessions feature GIA PhDs, field gemologists, educators, and research scientists whose experience and expertise offer a treasure trove of, well, knowledge. Diamond mind exploration, fascinating worlds of pearl and shells, geology 101 for gemologists. These are just a few of the journeys we've taken in the past few months and nearly 20,000 attendees spanning across almost 150 countries have joined us. And we're so appreciative, humbled, and inspired by the tremendous feedback, comments, and encouragement from all who have joined us. Thank you. And we have heard you, and we promise there's more to come. We look forward to knowledge sessions growing as a signature part of our content offerings for you in the future. For those with a further appetite for knowledge, we also launched our Knowledge Rocks emails, containing digestible nuggets of gem knowledge. These weekly emails bring readers the best of the best from our library, lab, and field gemology teams. Why is Spinel the master of disguise, you might ask? What are the clues, telltale signs of laboratory-grown diamond? And where can you find the oldest rubies in the world? Well, these and other intriguing topics allow you to dive into a variety of gemstones, peep into the analytical minds of our gem graders, and embark on the rugged adventures with our field gemologists to gem mines and markets all around the world. And subscribing to these emails is super easy and can be found at gia.edu forward slash JCK virtual. And lastly, for anyone with a strong interest in digging in deeper to the science and actually sharing your knowledge with us and others, we have just the place for you. From the incredible team that brings you gems and gemology, the G and G, comes a community dedicated to the discussion around gemology and the research published in GIA's famous quarterly journal. You can find it through Facebook, and we look forward to you joining in and sharing in the conversation. Hello, I'm Catherine Ramirez with GIA. Over the last few months, I think we all started to recognize and appreciate the need for building up our digital ecosystem and finding new ways to accelerate our business and connect with our customers. We've redesigned our GIA online store to make it easy for you to find the tools you need, from gem identification equipment to displays for loose diamonds, along with content for your website. We are committed to making the resources you need even more cost effective with free shipping on all orders within the US and we're giving you 50% off of all of our point of sale materials. If you're a retailer, you will want to check out the materials we have in store for your store. These include GIA branded loose diamond and colored stone display cases and trays that will show off your gems while keeping your showcases organized. You can also pique interest and add value with our free GIA branded assets. These are a brilliant way to let consumers know that you carry GIA graded stones. Our digital sales tools give you free content to include on your website, educating your customers while they are shopping online. Keep an eye out for more co-branded materials on the horizon. We want to make it easy for consumers to find you. From the retailer section of the GIA store, you can sign up for the retailer lookup so customers can view your store address, hours, and get directions. You can even let consumers know you carry our new Diamond Origin reports, which we'll talk about more in just a minute. Jump over to the Instruments section to find some of the latest innovations in gemstone detection. Our popular laboratory-grown diamond detector, the GIA ID100, is the most accurate and affordable desktop device in its class, designed to distinguish simulated and laboratory-grown diamonds from mined diamonds. It's the only diamond detector of its kind to be able to test colorless and fancy colored diamonds, including blue to green, brown, and pink diamonds test any mounted or loose stones, even Mali, and get results in just two seconds. Go to store.gia.edu for all of this and more. Trust and traceability are two concepts that go hand in hand in the mind of the modern consumer. As the creator of the four C's and experts on the colored stone transparency scale, we know that gem clarity and transparency are important, both within a gem and throughout its supply chain. 
Today's jewelry consumers don't just want to be consumers. They want to know their purchase contributes to the world they live in, reflecting their values of authenticity, ethics, and sustainability. Those values have created a new system where invisible factors such as provenance and social responsibility affect the price and desirability of a stone. If you can not only claim but prove your jewelry's ethical credentials, you will earn your client's trust and continue to thrive. This is why we created the GIA Diamond Origin Report which traces a diamond's journey from its rough to its polished state to confirm its geographic origin. This service reports on diamonds from countries all over the world, large and small, from leading producers like South Africa, Botswana, Canada, and Russia, to the smaller countries like the picturesque and mountainous country of Lesotho. To be eligible for an origin report, rough diamonds are submitted to GIA and analyzed with documentation from the mine. After polishing, the diamond is resubmitted to GIA where we use our proprietary science-based process to match the polished gemstone to its original rough diamond, confirming the diamond's geographic origin. Every diamond has a story to tell. From its fiery birth, through its transformative journey, every diamond is unique a billion years in the making. Did you know that diamonds help support indigenous communities in Canada? Or that funds from diamonds help build schools, hospitals, other infrastructure in Botswana? Or that GIA helped build four libraries for South African schools? Ethically sourced diamonds sustain communities around the globe, giving your customers confidence and pride in their purchase. When you know your diamond's origin, you can communicate the impact it has had on the lives of those who've labored to bring us its beauty. Each country's unique story and the diamond's fascinating journey are available through the GIA Origin app, report check, or printed books. Origin isn't just for diamonds. For the colored stone connoisseurs out there, we have the colored stone origin report and we will soon launch the colored stone origin and traceability report. Our origin report services include photos of the stones in the rough and polished, along with a narrative about the countries that they came from. In the coming months, keep an eye out for the Diamond Origin Dossier Report. This new service will increase availability for diamonds under one carat with origin documentation. All of these reports add value and interest by establishing the provenance and offering consumers peace of mind about their gem social impact. GIA strives to deliver detailed gem data for diamonds and colored stones. And of course, we didn't forget about pearl. Our new cultured pearl classification report for bead pearls is a quick, affordable option ideal for analysis of a large quantity of pearls. Instead of receiving full assessments, submitted pearls are simply analyzed for their pearl and mollusk type. As the industry evolves, we are here for you, tailoring our services to fit you and your clients' needs. Go to gia.edu slash jckvirtual to learn more about our origin reports. Susan, we've covered a lot of ground today. And what's clear is that we're busy at work advancing the GIA mission in, in new and exciting ways. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about how has the GIA mission evolved given everything that's going on and how does it set our future course for the Institute? GIA has an incredible mission of protecting the consumer. And we have followed that mission in everything we do every single day for the past 90 years. Our mission will change and evolve as the consumer changes and evolves because our mission is centered by the consumer and it's listening to the consumer, hearing the consumer and understanding what the consumer needs are in this new normal. What are some of the consumer trends that, that you're seeing as it relates to, to our industry and, and where do you think we're headed with consumers? I think there are a few distinct trends, and I think one of them is not only exclusive to the gem and jewelry industry, I think it's this idea of taking care of our planet. And our planet is precious, and people now believe very strongly in sustainability, in mm. responsible sourcing. 
how do we go about making sure that every member of the supply chain partakes in the success of the supply chain. And I think that that focus for the gem and jewelry industry is one that has been coming to fruition, but will be accelerated significantly as we move forward. The human drive to uh, use as, as, as gifts gems and jewelry to, to mark occasions and, and to celebrate, uh, is that changing fundamentally? Uh, are the values changing? Are the desires changing? How would you say that the, the consumer behavior has evolved? I think that the gem and jewelry industry has been always fortunate to celebrate the milestones of people's lives. That's what we do. Yeah. And as retailers, I was a retailer for many, many years. Um, that was what excited me every single day and gave me great passion, was helping people commemorate significant birthdays, wonderful anniversaries, the birth of a child, graduations, job successes. All of those things will continue and will continue well into the future how we address those, how that gift giving occurs, is what will probably be changing. You talked earlier about how we at GIA are accelerating our innovation pursuits and technology at a disruptive pace. There's no technology that has been more part of the industry conversation over the last couple of years uh, than laboratory-grown diamonds. And what are your thoughts on technology and, and how it affect it, and, and as it relates to laboratory-grown diamonds, uh, what's GIA's position on, on laboratory-grown diamonds and what will it be moving forward? I've been in the industry for 40 years, and there's been a lot of change that has happened during that time. But I think the changes that are occurring will help the survival of the industry as we continue to go forward. Synthetic diamonds were first formed in 1955 right. by GE. Right. And at that time, there were newspaper articles talking about the demise of the natural diamond world, that people would no longer want natural diamond because they now had the synthetic alternative. And that has been not the case. Thankfully, technology has enabled the fact that natural diamonds and lab-grown diamonds can coexist today mm -hmm. um, in retail stores. And I think we've seen the progression of that over recent years as more and more lab-grown diamonds are being brought to market, the technology has enabled the, the creation on scale that was never available before, and consumers are beginning to adopt this as a new product that they have interest in. It is not going to replace natural diamond. The natural diamond story is one of the most unique, extraordinary stories, I believe, that exists on Earth. To be able to give a gift that is a billion years old, that formed more than 100 miles below the surface of the Earth, had to come to the surface through a volcano and bring one of Mother Nature's natural, incredible treasures to market, um, is something that lab-grown diamonds, grown in factories, will never replace. But there's an affordability factor to lab-grown diamonds. People are able to get a bigger stone for the same money. Those factors are things that consumers today are looking at and changing. Talk a little bit about the journey that we've been on uh, with this product and, and where we're headed. Part of our mission, obviously, is the trust in the gem and jewelry industry, yeah. but it's to protect the consumer. And as long as the consumer is well educated and understands the product that they are buying because there is full disclosure, I think it's very, very important that GIA continue to evolve our grading of this product. Twelve years ago, synthetic diamonds was the terminology that was being used. A year and a half ago, we changed that right. terminology, and now our reports are known as lab-grown diamond reports. And because of the formation of lab-grown stones and the difference from natural with the continuum of color, at that time, we chose not to put the color and clarity grading scale on the reports, but today we are announcing that we are going to make that change hmm. in a brand new digital report. And so it'll be a digital only report that will come to the market to a savvy new consumer that is interested in this product. Why the evolution now? What, what, what's, what's moving us in that direction now? Our focus on our mission. Yeah. It's really simple. It is ensuring that the consumer is protected. And we think it is very, very important that GIA be able to assure consumers of the products that they are buying and provide them with a grading report that they're actually asking for. As we look at digital transformation on the whole, what are some of the other 
initiatives that, that excite you ab about where we're headed and uh, what are some of the things that, that we're, we're working on? So the use of technology, mobile devices, um, the ability to shop online is a big new trend right now. And came about through the pandemic, it was happening before, but is accelerating and helping uh, consumers to shop whenever they want, wherever they want, by whatever means they want. And so we're very, very excited about the future of digital reports. We're mm. very, very excited about the incredible work that we are doing with IBM that is world-class research, using the unparalleled data that GIA has through the millions of diamonds that we grade each and every year cumulatively amount of data that we have that we can feed into this artificial intelligence puts GIA in a position that no one else is able to be. What would you say to all of the retailers and all those that are, are getting back into their stores and beginning to get back to life as, as we knew it to a certain degree, but what, what kind of sentiment would you share about you know, your optimism about uh, getting back to work and, and the future of the industry? Fortunately, always very optimistic. My former boss, Warren Buffett, used to say, you retailers are the most optimistic group of people I've ever come across. And the fact of the matter is, we do have a bright future ahead of us. We need to listen to the consumer. We need to adapt. We do need to change. We need to be relevant to how the consumer wants to interact with retail today and engaging with the consumer. And I think retail has a bright future. It, Omnichannel is obviously the future. Um, no longer just a brick and mortar store. I think the stores that had online channels available during the pandemic were able to continue their businesses where those with only a store perhaps were more challenged. But we will come to the other side of this. GIA has been around since 1931. In our 90 year history, we have seen wars and pandemics. We've seen all sorts of challenges, financial crashes, but we've survived and we've thrived on the other side of each and every one of those. And I think this industry is a resilient industry. It's all about relationships and those relationships will continue. And that trust that we continue to focus on with our mission is the same factor that makes the relationship with retailers and the consumers so very strong. It's not gonna change. Well, Susan, why don't we end where we began, which is about the mission and about serving our GIA community in new and exciting ways. Thank you all for spending the time with us today at the JCK virtual experience. It's been a very cool day, very uh, appreciative of JCK for bringing us all together, uh, even though we couldn't be uh, together in person, which we hope we certainly can soon. If you'd like to engage with us, have any questions or thoughts about what you saw today, uh, please sure to send us a note at gia.edu forward slash JCK virtual, and we'll certainly look forward to hearing from you uh, and getting back to you. That's it from us. Stay healthy, everybody. Take care.